Hello, this is Ryan with Deepwood Handcraft, bringing you this video today from a nearly summerish weather day here in Alaska. It's got to be about 50 degrees out here. It's probably not that, but it feels like it with that sun just beating down with all intensity that Alaska sun offers. Um, this little shirt is just about too much out here in the sun. And if you can see in the background, there is not a cloud in the sky. And I have never seen a blue sky like I have seen in Alaska. Something just looks different about it. I don't know. Anyway, uh, just bringing this video to show some uh, stuff my wife just got finished up with. And I say my wife... Um, Got finished up with it. It was a joint effort, but she did most of the work, such as the uh, measuring, marking, cutting, sewing on these. And uh, posted a couple of pics of this sewing kit that I'm getting ready to show you a couple of days ago, or maybe yesterday. And uh, get a lot of comments like, uh, great job, bro, or you've got good skills, bro, or that kind of thing and I appreciate those comments and of course these are my designs but my wife is doing a lot and I would say the majority of the work on these uh, smaller items now while I focus on the big stuff like the shoulder bags and the veg tan stuff like the bedroll straps and that kind of thing um, So if we post pictures of something and it's just been finished up, don't assume necessarily that I'm the one that did that because if it's a smaller item, it was most likely mostly her work. So uh, she's gotten really good at it because I have, along the process of teaching her how to do this stuff, if something was wrong, and I do this to myself also, it might seem a little cruel, but I will cut it apart right in front of her after explaining what it was that was wrong and make her do it over again and like I said I do that to myself as well if it's not right it gets taken apart if a piece isn't right it gets refabricated and a great motivator for not making mistakes is to see the work that you've just spent a couple hours on get undone and have to redo it all again so that's how we do that so she sewed up these two belt pouches I'm about to show you and I don't know how well you can see this because the sun is blinding me right now it's probably distorting the color on these a little bit this was formerly known as the Martin survival pouch from henceforth it will be known as the wastelands wanderer and that's because uh, this was kind of based on some color schemes that Jeff Martin from Jeff Martin Survival ordered a while back, put a video on it. But he has since sold his pouch for whatever reason, and that's okay. But uh, I've tweaked the design on it a little bit, made it a little more aesthetic, did a little more for the structural integrity of the thing and so since he no longer carries this in his adventures we will change the name of it to the wasteland wanderer because normally people that order this color scheme are in the desert it seems with the lighter tan veg tan over top the uh whatever soft leather we can do these in any colors you want um this one has a fire steel loop on it for a half inch fire steel that kind of thing can be added to just about anything we make that is big enough to support a fire steel. Um, like I said, we can do these in any colors if you like the shape and size and you know the design of this pouch. But you don't like the colors and that's not a problem. Just about any color you would want we can accommodate. Um, so this one's got a Leatherman pocket in it. This pouch is empty pretty much so it's... I haven't stuffed it with anything for the shape or whatever just is what it is. Leatherman pouch on the side 
This has got a soft leather pocket overlaid with some veg tan. And on the original pouch, it was just kind of on top. On this pouch, it wraps around. Just kind of gives it, I think it looks much better that way and also gives it a bit more uh, structural integrity. But the soft leather is good with the uh, Leatherman. It's a little bit tight getting it in and out, but that's how I make this stuff. So that when it's new, it's a bit tight and when it uh, breaks in, it's just right. If you make it just right to start with and it stretches out a little bit, then it'll be loose and that's not how I like my gear, so that's how I make it. So uh, Leatherman pocket. D-ring, this one's got an added fire steel loop. Do these little uh, sinew wraps on this, and this is artificial sinew just like all the stitching on this pouch. Just kind of uh, give it a little design aesthetic I guess, and probably does toughen it up a little bit for long term use, makes it a little stiffer. Antler toggle. On the inside of this pouch is a uh, wet formed Hudson Bay tin pocket in the center there. Plenty of room on the sides and this is a pretty big pouch so there's lots of room in there despite that thing being in there. If you want an Altoids tin pocket in there instead that's easy to do. If you've got a specific tin you want a thing for, pocket for, then we can do that. If you don't want any pocket in there at all that's fine too. However you want it, that's how we make it. So along with this order, there's a few things. Some of them aren't quite finished up yet, but Misty wanted me to go ahead and get these on video. I've seen the other stuff going with it anyway. So this is our pocket sewing repair kit. Um, we've been doing these since 2011 with very much success. This is a pretty popular item. The uh, belt version of this, which was the first one that we did, this piece is on the bottom and this piece in the back keeps coming up. There would be a pocket right here. This would fold up and then a lid to fold over with an antler toggle and a belt loop on the back. But uh, not everyone wants that on their belt. So we basically just kept the same design and cut it off right there to offer a more compact version. This can just kind of go in your pack. This doesn't have a pocket with it, so it doesn't have any thread or anything with it, but uh, just the tools for you to be able to repair your kit with whatever kind of thread you want. We got your scissors on this side. These are actually uh, pretty decent for cutting materials with. Um, you're not going to cut super thick stuff with any ease with these, but it can be done in a pinch. Though if you have a sharp knife, that would probably be better for cutting really thick materials. But any kind of fabric or canvas, these will cut that just fine. Thread nippers. Cutting your threads and whatnot. Kind of redundant with the other scissors on the back, but... They're there if you want to use them. Bone all, I've, uh, and that's pretty tight in there, that's not just going to fall out. I bust the tip off these when I get them. I don't make these myself, I order these. And uh, sharpen it to a diamond point. That way it's just a little stronger on the tip if that happens to pop off a little bit. Scraping it on a coarse rock, we'll sharpen it right back up. comes with a little lanyard on it just to kind of bunch up in your hand and give you a little more protection when pushing it through whatever material you're trying to poke holes in. Like I said, we've been doing these since about 2011 and I've never put it on camera for video purpose. So uh, Misty wanted me to get a video of this one. That's the needle case in there, all kind of different types of needles. For whatever different situation you might find yourself repairing, whatever gear you might need to repair. That folds up and goes in there. That's easy to get in and out, but that's not going to fall out of there on its own. Not in a million years. So, uh, 
you might want to make sure you know which end your uh, needle points are facing and face them all in the right direction so that when you're pushing this thing out of there you don't end up getting your finger with it because I have done that before right underneath my fingernail and that is not a pleasant experience So, just a nice little bit of kit. Have all your little repair tools on there and your needles for whatever situation you may run into. Easily fits in a belt pouch. This size definitely could fit in one of the smaller ones. Or you can throw it in a pocket on whatever bag you're carrying. Easy peasy. All right. So here's that same pouch again. This one is in dark brown. The original one comes in the uh, reddish brown color. This one was specifically asked for a dark brown. And so it's pretty much the same exact setup. Slightly different toggles because no antlers are exactly the same. So just so you can kind of see the color comparison with the dark brown versus the red brown. I like them both. So that is it for this video. Um, Gotta get back in and finish up a bunch of Buckeyes that I'm currently working on all together at the same time. So uh, that's it for me for today. Have a good one.